All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are gonna go ahead and get started. This is the state expedited accusations calendar in the state court of Fulton County, Georgia. I'm Judge Melanie Williams, and today is April the 19th of 2024. All defendants, you have an absolute right to remain silent. Anything you say regarding the facts of your case can and will be used against you. You also have the right to counsel today. As you can see, I'm conducting this hearing over the internet as a live stream. It's also being recorded. That means any member of the public can log on and watch this particular proceeding. When I ask if you understand your rights, I'm referring to the rights I just explained and how I am conducting the hearing today. Um, those who receive a signature bond, whether through pretrial or through the jail, will be reset for the notice. Those who receive a surety or a cash bond will be reset to the state all-purpose calendar on May the 2nd of 2024. All right. Um, have all defense attorneys had the opportunity to interview their clients? Yes. All right. Let's get started. Who do we have first? Position number one, Jocelyn Avila. All right. Ms. Avila, your case is 24CR002030G. zero zero two zero three zero g You're charged with battery family violence. Do you understand your rights? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Howard, can I have it? Is Mr. Howard here? There he is. Your Honor. Uh, yes. This is Keith Cook. This is also uh, a cross defendant with Mr. Hernandez, who is also, uh, will be also before you today. Is that I position believe. four? That's correct, Your Honor. And I believe Ms. McLeod has, I, I think Ms. McLeod has that case. Okay. Mr. Howard, can we have the history for position one? Who is this, Avila? Yes. Uh, six total on probation out of Gwinnett for conspiracy to commit a felony. Uh, open case out of Fulton for theft by taking. That's in state court. Uh, 2022 simple battery conviction. That uh, 29th, yeah, he on probation for that. Sorry. Okay. This is Okay. All right, Mr. Graham, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This incident took place on April 18, 2024. Law enforcement responded to a dispute call at 8601 Roberts Drive in Atlanta. Uh, Jocelyn Avila and her boyfriend, Gustavo Hernandez, uh, were involved in an altercation that became physical. They each sustained injuries. Uh, Ms. Avila struck Mr. Hernandez in the face with a closed fist and causing bruising and cuts to his face. Um, Your Honor, based on the history, the state is recommending a $1,000 surety bond, one day anger awareness, no further contact with Gustavo Hernandez. Um, we'll let the court decide who stays away from the residence. I do believe they live together. No alcohol, drugs, or weapons while out of bond. All right, Mr. Cook? Yes, Your Honor. My uh, client denies the allegations of, uh, in, in the accusation. Um, they do indeed uh, live at the same address. Um, she has two minor children there as well that are not that live with her there uh in, in the home that are not his children one is um one girl 15 one one boy 11 we would ask that if, if the court requires i know further contact or stay away that she be allowed to stay in the home she has personally has no problem with uh um with everybody being back in the same residence. So uh, with that, uh, we would ask for a, uh, a signature only bond at the level the court deems appropriate. All right, defendant will receive a $1,500 surety bond. She's to have no further violent contact with the cross defendant and have no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons. And she'll be reset to May 2nd, state all purpose. Is there anything additional? No, you're on. All right. Can, you Can we do the cross defendant? Can you repeat the bond amount? 1500 surety. Can we take the cross defendant case? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And then if she come on. Who is across? Uh, position four, Gustavo Hernandez. Yes. 
Ms. Hernandez, your case is 24CR002031G. Zero, 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 You're charged with one count of battery failing violence. You understand your rights? Is that a yes? All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Howard. I got 14 total. In probation, Hall County for two counts of ag assault. Uh, burglary, first degree, and another ag assault. 2024 FTA, 2019 probation, 2018 probation. 2014 battery DV conviction. Okay. Mr. Graham, okay. please proceed. Uh, thank you, Honor. Same facts. Uh, Mr. Hernandez struck Ms. Avila in, in the head and face, causing bruising and cuts to her face. And, Your Honor, the state is recommending, uh, based on the... Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. The state is recommending also a $1,500 surety bond, a one-day anger awareness, no further contact with Jocelyn Avila. Um, stay away from the incident location, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons while out of bond. All right, Ms. McLeod, please proceed. Yes, Your Honor. My client vehemently denies the allegations, Your Honor. My understanding is that the police may have been called by someone who heard them arguing, but neither of the parties called the police. My client tells me that um, Miss Avila and he are in a relationship, that he really does care about her, and it was just a misunderstanding between them. He would like to have no further violent contact. He's okay with that, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to order the same requirements. $1,500 surety bond, no further violent contact with the cross-defendant. No alcohol, no drugs, no weapons as a condition and reset to state our purpose on the 2nd of May. Is there anything additional? Nothing further, Your Honor. And that right. concludes my business before the court. May I be excused? Yes, you may, Ms. McLeod. Take care. Have a good afternoon. You too, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Who do we have next? Position number three, the Code of Floyd. All right. Good afternoon. Your case is 24CR002033F. Zero, 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 three, three You're charged with driving on a suspended license and, license and obstruction. Do you understand your rights today? Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Mr. Howard. 17. Uh, 2024 probation. 2024 suspended license arrest. 2021 probation. 2021 FTA, 2020 FTA, 2020 suspended license, no low, 2019 obstruction, fleeing conviction, and a, a FTA hold warrant out of the cab County. Okay, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Honor. On April 17, 2024, Dakota Floyd was observed driving near the intersection of Ivywood Lane and Huntington Drive in Roswell. Uh, Ms. Floyd has an active warrant for driving with a suspended license out of Dunwoody. The officer was able to approach the vehicle after she turned into an apartment complex. Uh, that apartment complex is Manchester Apartments at 401 Huntington Drive. The officer informed her that there was a warrant for her arrest. She needed to return to the parking lot. Uh, she refused to walk back, and then she did resist arrest by refusing to place her hands behind her back and tensed her body before pulling away. Mr. Floyd, Ms. Floyd was placed in handcuffs after being pushed to the ground. Uh, Your Honor, state's recommending a $1,000 surety bond that's 500 on each count. No driving without a valid license, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons while out on bonds. All right, Mr. Cook, a lot of the information before me, I'm inclined to give your client a signature bond to the jail, but absolutely require her not to drive without a license. And it seems as if she does not have one, so she's not to get behind any vehicle. Is there any objection to that, Mr. Cook? You're muted. Uh, sorry. No objection, Your Honor. Did you object? Oh. Oh, no objection, Your Honor. Okay. And my internet is doing something strange. So if I lose you all, I'll be right back. All right. Uh, defendant will receive a $3,000 signature bond through the jail, $1,500 on each count. She is not to drive at all unless she has a valid license issued by the Georgia GDS. She's had no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons as a condition of that signature bond through the jail. Best of luck to you, Ms. Floyd. Who do we have next? Position number nine, Brandon Phillips.
All right, good afternoon, Mr. Phillips. Your case is 24CR002039. J. you're charged with theft by shoplifting. You understand your rights? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Howard? Um, <clears throat> He got 43 arrests, and they all stem from the last 11 years. He got a current felony shoplifting in the Superior Court. I don't, I don't know what the bond was today. Uh, 2023 FTA. I mean, a uh, shoplifting trespass. That's opening uh Superior Court 23 CP 222776. Another open shoplifting 23 CP 218458. Another open shoplifting obstruction terrorist threats in PI 23 CP 218457. He got a burglary conviction in his history as well, and a lot of shoplifting. All right. Is Good afternoon. Are judge, you Ms. Estiano? Is that am I saying it correctly? Yes, Judge, you are saying it correctly. Nice to meet you. This is my case. Um, Your okay. Honor, this incident um occurred on April 18th, 2024. Law enforcement was dispatched to the Chevron located at 2656 Donald Lee Howley Parkway in Atlanta in reference to a shoplifting. Upon arrival, officer made contact with the reporting employee who showed the officer video of the defendant who is a habitual shoplifter there, placing several items of candy, chips, drinks, and other items under his jacket. He stood in line, and when the other patrons entered the store, he stepped out of line and left the store without paying. The employee stated that the defendant left the store and headed into the direction of Hamilton E. Holmes Drive upon canvassing the area. An individual matching the description of the individual in the video identified as defendant was sitting at a MARTA bus stop at the intersection of Holmes and Donnelly Howell. When the officer approached the defendant, he closed the hood of his hoodie, pulled the drawstrings tight in an attempt to hide his face. He was detained. Um, he also had previous warrants out for his arrest and he was transported back to the Chevron where he was positively identified by the employee. Um, as Mr. Howard said, judge, he does have several shopliftings our office is in the process of transferring this as of today by my count he has one two three six convictions for shoplifting and then he has open cases two counts of theft one two three and five additional shopliftings here in Fulton so with that the state would recommend a surety bond in the amount of five thousand a stay away from Chevron at 2656 Donnelly Howell Parkway in Atlanta and no drugs, weapons, or alcohol while on bond. What was the value of what he took? Chips, Allegedly. Please don't say anything, sir. I'm, please. Um, What's the value of what he took? Judge, let me look at the report. It's not in my notes. I apologize. But it, it's minuscule. But the point is, Judge, the bond amount is so high because he continually keeps stealing things over and over and over again. Okay. He's not following the bond conditions that were given to him in his previous cases. He's he's doing what he wants to do. All right. Mr. Ty, is that you? Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. All right. The screen was small. I didn't want to get it wrong. All right. Please proceed. Um, Your Honor, my client is 28 years old. Um, I wouldn't say he's doing what he wants to do. I understand there's some history. Um, in this case, is a misdemeanor theft by shoplifting. And actually, the... Uh, the felony theft by shoplifting today, um, the, that was also laundry detergent. Um, it's, it, it's because of the number of shoplifting. Um, he's homeless, Your Honor. He tells me that he's on the wait list for four shelters. Um, you know, he, he's having a really difficult time. He's 28 years old. He's been in Georgia all his life. Okay. What he cannot afford, first of all, his bond is set at $1,000 right now. So he definitely can't even afford the thousand dollar bond um I, I i would ask for a signature bond through um i would actually ask for a signature bond through the jail in this case because on the felony theft by shoplifting because it was laundry detergent i believe the uh, he, he has a um signature bond through pretrial services level three already on on those okay so you say he already he, he are you sure of that bond Mrs. His, yes his attorney uh, emailed me Okay. Uh, since he's already reporting to pretrial for that case, we'll do the same against, my, we're giving you a chance, Mr. Phillips. You understand? Stay away from those locations and comply with the requirements of pretrial. I'm going to give you a chance this time. Defendant is going to receive a $5,000 signature bond through pretrial at level three. 
consistent with what he's already received for his felony shoplifting charges. He is absolutely to stay away from that store. Do not even walk past that store, sir. Just cross over to the other side of the road. Have no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons as a condition. Is there anything additional? Yeah, this would be per judge. Per judge. Only because we already got one, Mr. Howard. You may as well keep all the cases together. All right. Best of luck to you, Mr. Phillips. Man, you got no shelter. I can go to nowhere to stay. I can get nowhere to stay. Perhaps. It, can we also do BHET for him, Miss Ms. Atai? Has a social worker spoken to him? Um, Your Honor, I, I don't I, I don't think that he needs a BHET. I think that um, they have housing pack, housing information packets here at the jail that they can give him, but um Unfortunately, it's a Friday, and I don't know if he would have been referred to Pat anyway. Probably not, but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll request a social worker to visit him. But if he's, I don't, I don't know. Okay, understood. We do not, Mr. Phillips, we are sympathetic, but we don't have that those resources right now. But the, Mr. Uh -oh. Pat is going to give you some information, okay? No, I'm saying, and that thing, no, I'm be, I'm gonna be back in by 14 more days. You're gonna be looking at me again, and you ain't gonna want to let me out of jail. I don't, yeah, I don't want to look at you. Yeah, you're correct. You're correct. Mr. Wow. Ty will get a social worker to speak to you. I don't want to look at you again. I do understand the situation. <sighs> Are you all right at courtroom two? Yes. All right. Are we ready for the next position? We can go to position number two. Are we out? I'm sure we're all right. If we're in two? Okay. Well, he's got a statement for us. All right, good afternoon, Mr. Reed. Your case is 24CR002032J. You're charged with battery and criminal trespass and damage to property. Do you understand your rights? Yes, I do, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Howard, can I have a history, please? Yeah, uh, 11 total, 2020 theft by taking, 18 FTA, 18 obstruction conviction, 17 battery DV, disorderly conduct conviction, and 13 battery conviction. You said that was 17 battery DB? 2017. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Graham? I think, Your Honor, this incident took place on October 26, 2023. Law enforcement responded to an assault and a vandalism call at 2200 Godby Road, College Park. Upon arrival, they spoke with Tion Williams. He advised that Reed Coleman had spent the night a few days before and took Mr. Williams' AirPods when he left. Uh, Mr. Coleman returned to the residence on October 25th to return the AirPods. And on the day of the incident, the 26th, after an exchange of text messages between the two, Mr. Coleman came back to the residence uh, through a brick through the patio door window that started Mr. Williams and he ran to the front door. Uh, that time, Mr. Coleman barged in, started punching Mr. Williams in the face until his nose started to bleed profusely. The officer also noticed uh, swelling to Mr. Williams's face. Our office has been in touch with Mr. Williams. Uh, he says that he and Mr. Coleman were friends. Um, he confirmed the events in a warrant that he has not seen or spoken to Mr. Coleman since the incident. Uh, he had to pay $500 to get the patio door fixed. Uh, he no longer lives at that location, um, does not want any contact and that he was unable to attend Zoom. And Your Honor, based on the history, the state is going to recommend a two twenty five hundred dollars surety bond. It's two thousand dollars on the battery, five hundred dollars on the uh, criminal trespass. Uh, we're also going to recommend an anger awareness course, Your Honor. No further contact with Tion Williams, and to stay away from wherever Mr. Williams is currently living. No alcohol, drugs, or weapons while out on bond. And All right, we may sound. I'm, I'm sounding for Mr. Williams right now. Mr. Williams, if you are present on this Zoom conference and wish to make a, a statement, this is your opportunity to do so. Are you present? All right, hearing none. Uh, who's representing Mr. Coleman? That would be me, Your Honor. Please All right, please. Mr. Cook, please proceed. Your Honor, we have uh, no objection to the no further contact or the stairway or the... Uh, uh, no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. 
uh, we would object to the to the anger management course, and we would uh, uh, be seeking a signature bond at whatever level the court deems appropriate. All right, defendant is going to receive a two thousand dollars surety bond. It'll be fifteen hundred on the battery, five hundred on the criminal trespass for that total of two thousand. If they have no contact with Mr. Williams and stay away from Mr. Williams' residence. Additionally, he's to have no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, and his case can and may be revisited at state all purpose on the 2nd of May. All right. Best of luck to you, Mr. Coleman. What do we have next? Your Honor. Yes. Yes. Generally, uh, the SEA attorneys stay for the whole calendar, but I, I need to be across <laughs> town by five. Mr. Uh, Cook, you don't want to stay with us for the rest well, of the Well, Your Honor, I would love to stay with you because... I would love I, to be across town when, with you. You can be... No, a, you no, you wouldn't because when I get there, I have to pay my mechanic $850. Oh, yeah, that's not a... Uh, you can go handle that. I can't help you. Okay, there. you'll be you'll be seeing my GoFundMe page in this <laughs> weekend. So thank you very much. All right, take care, Mr. Cook. Have a great afternoon. Okay. All right, who do we have next? If we have anyone next, we can go to position number seven, Ms. Mia Lemons. Okay, Ms. Lemons, your case is 24CR002036. Why you're charged with theft by shoplifting? You understand, right? No. All right, Mr. Howard. Uh, fifth arrest. Mr. Howard. Open. Can you hear me? We, we did hear you, Mr. Howard. Oh, All right. My bad. Okay. Um, fifth arrest. Open case out of car. Three counts of shoplifting. Coweta shoplifting. DeKalb County shoplifting. I'm probation enforcing for shoplifting. Lots of shoplifting. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Mr. Grant, please proceed. Thank you, Honor. Uh, so this incident took place on April 18, 2024. Law enforcement responded to uh, T.J. Max at 650 Ponce de Leon Avenue in Atlanta. Reference to a shoplifting uh, incident. Upon arrival, the officer met with loss prevention, who advised that Mia Lemons, along with two other women, entered the store. They went to various sections. The other two women would pass various items of men's, women's, and children's clothing to Miss Lemons. Miss Lemons then took the items and concealed them in a large shopping uh, shoulder bag. Uh, Miss Lemons walked past all points of sale with the items without paying. She was confronted by security and staff. Um, the incident was captured by the security cameras. Uh, Ms. Lemons managed to get away from security. She dropped the items while running away. Um, all the merchandise totaled about $470. It was recovered. Ms. Lemons later returned to the location at which point she was arrested. Um, Your Honor, based on the history, the state is recommending a $2,000 surety bond. Stay away from TJ Maxx at 650 Ponce de Leon Avenue. No alcohol, drugs, or weapons while out on bond. All right, Mr. Ty, in light of your client's history and uh, the fact that's presented, I'm inclined to do a signature bond through pretrial per judge. Um, is there any objection to that? She, of course, would need to stay away from that entire plaza. Yes, um, no at six. Okay, it's going to be a signature bond through pretrial at level two per judge. She needs to stay away from that entire shopping complex at 650 Ponce de Leon and have no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons. Anything additional? What's the amount? I'm sorry, 2000 Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Lemons, you're getting a second chance. Don't go back to that store. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Take care. Who do we have next? Position number 10, Janera Shannon. All right. Ms. Shen, uh, Ms. Shannon. Your case is 24CR002037H. Your case number, I'm sorry, and in this case, you're charged with simple battery family violence. Do you understand your rights today? Yes, ma'am. All right, please proceed, Mr. Howard. It's first arrest. Okay, thank you. All right, yes, Ms. Stefano, please proceed. Thank you, Judge. This incident occurred on March 29th, 2024. Officers responded to 495 Ankara Court in South Fulton in reference to a domestic dispute. 
Upon arrival, officers made contact with the defendant who buys, who advised that her grandson, James Hilton, damaged her property and hit her several times. While on the scene, the officer discovered that the grandson was wanted by the Fairburn police for a theft case, and the grandson was placed in the back of the patrol car, at which point he showed the officer a video of the, of the earlier altercation that showed the defendant hitting the grandson repeatedly. The officer left the scene with the grandson to turn him over to Fairburn PD and later obtained a warrant for the defendant's arrest, which is why she wasn't arrested at that time. And um, we have been in touch with the victim judge. He is the grandson. They lived together at the incident location. The victim stated that the defendant pushed him. It wasn't a serious altercation. He said that he's not looking to press charges. They've been living together since this incident without problems, and he would like contact and wants her to return to the residence. Sure. So with that, the state would recommend a signature bond through pretrial services, no further violent contract contact with the victim, and no weapons, drugs, or alcohol will out on bond. And at this point, Judge, if you could sound for Mr. James Hilton, please. All right, Mr. Hilton, I see you online. If you'd like to make a statement, please unmute your screen and raise your right hand. You're still muted, though. You can hear me? Yes. Do you swear okay. and affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to the best of your knowledge under the penalty of perjury? Uh, yes. All right, you can put your hand down. All right, what would you like to tell me? Um. Oh, nothing really. Like I, I, I don't know why the uh the officer he kind of went under his own, you know, free will and I guess took out a warrant and stuff like that. I was telling them that um there was no like violence going on really. It was just like a push or whatever. But I don't want to press charges. If there's any charges that that could be dropped, or uh, whatever I could do. But there's no there's no incident or issue. Nothing criminally happened. So okay. I don't. Yeah. All right, Mr. Ty, in light of this uh, information before me, I'm inclined to give your client a signature bond through pretrial services at level one and require that she have no alcohol, no drugs and weapons and no further violent contact with the victim. Any objection? Well, Your Honor, I do appreciate that, but I would like to ask for a signature bond through the jail. Um, she's the one who called the police. She's she's almost 65 years old and this is her very first arrest. Uh, she is employed working 12 hour shifts as a production operator. I just don't know. Somebody who's gone 65 years with absolutely no arrest, no criminal history. I don't want her to have to report to free trial services. And you've heard that, I mean, in the warrant, it states that she's the one who called the police because her property was being damaged. And, and you've heard the complaining witness state that nothing happened. All right. Well, I'm not requiring the court, so I'll send it through the jail. Defendant received $5,000 signature bond through the jail. She's to have no further violent contact with the alleged victim and have no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons as a condition. Thank Is you. Additional. All right. Best of luck to you, ma'am. That concludes your case. Mm -hmm. Who do we have next? Position number 14, oh, yes. Monica Trust. Okay. Good afternoon. Your case is 24CR002042F. Zero 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 She's You're charged with battery family violence. You understand your right? Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Howard? First. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Siciano, please proceed. Thank you, Judge. This incident occurred yesterday, April 18th, 2024. Officers were dispatched to 2308 Lakewood Avenue in Atlanta in reference to a domestic dispute between the defendant and her daughter. Upon arrival, the officer spoke with both the victim and the defendant. The victim said that she and her mother were arguing. She went to take a bath and locked the bathroom door. The argument escalated and the defendant picked the lock in the bathroom door and attacked her. The defendant advised that she was attacked as well. However, the victim was covered in scratches on her face, neck, and back. And the defendant had an injury, a minor injury to her nose. Uh, we have not been in touch with the victim judge. And because of that, the state would recommend a Signature bond through pretrial services, no further contact with the victim, a stay away from the incident location, one day anger awareness, and no drugs, weapons, or alcohol while out on bond. And if you could please sound for, um, her name is Brineha Price. I'm sorry, the last name is what? Price. 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 All right, Ms. Price, if you're um, on the Zoom conference and wish to make a statement, this is your opportunity. Is Ms. Price on the Zoom conference? 
All right, hearing none, Ms. Kim, is this your case? Yes, Your Honor. All right, please proceed. Yes, Ms. Trust is 49 years old and her daughter is 26 years old. Um, the apartment is actually her apartment. She came to Georgia about a year ago to take care of her daughter who has a little bit of uh, issues and some medical needs that she has been helping out. Uh, she's the one who brings the, she's the basically, um, breadwinner for her daughter and her daughter's grandbaby, her, I mean, her grandbaby, her daughter's daughter, who is only four years old. Um, she does not want to evict her daughter. Uh, we would like to request for a signature on bond through jail and then uh, no further violent contact so she can go back home and take care of the granddaughter and a daughter who needs help. Um, she is financially challenged. Uh, actually, she gets a section eight uh, help. So we actually, she's qualified for public defender services and um, we would like to request for a signature on bond through uh, jail. Thanks. All right, has the state made any contact with the uh, alleged victim? I called, but her voicemail was um, full and I could not reach her. All right, um, Ms. Deciano, does the state yes, have Judge. Uh, The same response. We've been unable to reach her. Her voicemail is full. All right, without hearing from the um, victim and hearing that there's not been an adequate cooling off, I do understand. Is there somewhere else that your client can stay Ms. Kim temporarily? No, probably she may have to, I mean, homeless shelter. She doesn't have any other place to go to. All right. Well, I, I don't feel that we can confidently send her back. It, there has not been an adequate cooling off. Was that the state's recommendation, Ms. Desiano, as well? Yes, Judge, just stay away from the incident location and no further contact. Uh, I I would, is, if Ms. Cam, you're able to maybe try again and I hear from the daughter before the end of the calendar. Sure. But as it stands, defendant will receive a $4,000 signature bond through the jail. She is to have no contact with the alleged victim and stay away from that incident location. She's to have no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons as a condition of that signature by. But if we are able to hear from the daughter before the end, we may reconsider the, the contact provision. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Best of luck to you, ma'am. That concludes your team. Okay. Next, we have position number 11, George Snipe. All right, good afternoon. Oh, no one's there. Mrs. Snipes, your case is 24CR002043B. 0, 0, In this case, you're charged with battery family violence. Do you understand your rights? All right. All right, Mr. Howard. Um, all I got is a 2016 possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, a felony first offender. Uh, this GCRC was messed up, so that's all I got for that one. Okay. But I, it got to be another arrest with that to have that charge. So. Okay, Ms. Desiano, are you able to see it? I can, Your Honor. He has arrests. Going back to the 80s, there's a serious one in 85, ag assault, sodomy, rape, armed robbery, kidnapping. Recently, possession of a firearm of a convicted felon, 2012, theft, 2010, failure to register as a sex offender, 2008, FTA. Um, judge, this incident occurred January 3rd, 2024. Officers responded to 2196 Prior Road Southwest in Atlanta in reference to a dispute. Upon arrival, officers made contact with the victim. San I'm sorry, I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly. Santeria Rome, who advised that her father, the defendant, strangled her. Um, given the allegations, Judge, our office is in the process of upgrading this charge. The victim advised that she asked the defendant for a ride to the store. When leaving for the store, there was a disagreement about which store they were going to. The defendant did not like the way that his daughter was speaking to him and said, I brought you here. I will take you out stopped the car, pushed her out of the car, started choking her while she was on the floor, on the ground. Um, the victim got up to go inside. She came back out and then the defendant 
is alleged to slam her on the vehicle. Um, the victim sustained bruising and scratches to her neck. Several neighbors witnessed the incident. The defendant left the scene prior to the police arriving. Judge, we have not been able to get in touch um, with the victim at this time. We've tried multiple numbers and we can't, we've been unable to leave voicemail as well. Uh, the state recommends, given his history and because we have not been able to get in touch with the victim, a $2,500 surety bond, no further contact with the victim, a stay away from the incident location, FBIP, and no weapons, drugs, or alcohol will out on bond. And at this point, if we could please sound for Santeria Rome. All right. And if we could not make reference to sensitive charges, the court would appreciate that. I'm sorry. Is Ms. Rome present and wishes to make a statement? I don't see anyone with that name. Ms. Kim, please proceed. Yes, my client is 58 years old. And Your Honor, all those charges were very remote. And I, if I knew that uh, there was such a sensitive charge, I would have objected, raised objection, or I would have asked for, you know, breakout room, or it could have been just kind of hidden. Um, Your Honor, I don't want him to have any prejudicial uh, negative impact because of the very, very old charge, Your Honor. This happened on January 2004, and um, the place, incident location is daughter's place. They don't live together. My client is completely fine to stay away from that location. Even after that, uh, they have been having phone conversation. Um, her daughter is 39 years old, and they don't have, he does not have to have any contact either. We do not have any objection for that. We would like to request, request for a signature on bond through pretrial, uh, whichever level you feel uh, comfortable. He, I strongly prefer just level one. Um, he is working as a, uh, at the recycling place and um, he does not have any other child. He is, she's the only one child and um, we would like to request for signature on bond. He does not have any phone number to bail him out. Um, wh whoever cannot, he has no phone number he can remember, whoever can help him out to get out of the jail. So um, I think he needs to have a signature on bond through pretrial. What was the year of last arrest again? I'm sorry. What was the year? 2016. 2016, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, defendant is going to receive um, a $2,500 signature bond through pretrial services at level one. He's going to take the one day anger awareness course, have no contact with the alleged victim, stay away from that location, and have no alcohol no drugs and no weapons as a condition. And if it needs to be, that'll be per judge. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Best of luck to you, sir. That concludes your case. Next, we have position number 13, and that is Tyson Tinson. All right, Mr. Tinson, your case is 24 CR. 0002041A, you're charged with theft by taking. Do you understand your rights? I do. All right, Mr. Howard. Uh, So, GCRC was messed up with this one. I know he got history out of Texas and California, but the GCRC didn't come back. He wanted out of, He's wanted out of car for fraud. Okay. I did see that one, <laughs> but that's it. Oh. All right, Mr. Tiano, if you have anything else, please let me know. Yes, Judge, I have a recent arrest for burglary as well. Um, the GCIC is a little messed up because it has it uh, as them occurring at the same time, but there's two different incidents, this theft and the burglary. Um, that's all that I showed on my GCIC. Okay, that's fine. Please proceed with your recommendation. That's good. Okay. Your Honor, this incident occurred November 28th, 2023. Officers were called to a residential building located at 955 Spring Street Northwest in Atlanta in reference to a theft. Mm -hmm. Upon arrival, officers viewed security footage that showed the defendant stealing packages from the mailroom. The defendant was identified by the leasing office staff. The package that was stolen belonged to a woman named Lin Hao Yang and contained a camera case, an acrylic display box, and trading cards all valued at a total of $1,500 or less. Um, there is an open burglary case judge from last month, the same incident location. 
Um, same facts, he's alleged to have taken, uh, broken into the leasing office and taken packages. Uh, we did get in touch with the victim judge. She confirmed the offense in the warrant. She stated that she has not received any items back and would like the defendant to pay for the items that he stole. Um, the state recommends a $2,000 surety bond, no further contact with the victim, a stay away from the incident location, and no weapons, drugs, or alcohol while out on bond. All right. Smith Kemp? Yes, Your Honor. I believe that um, burglary charge that um, is happening together, he is be, he will be going to a felony court first appearance either today or tomorrow. Uh, they are just all happened at the same time, Your Honor. My client is... 25 years old and he is currently working. He starts his new job next Monday uh, as a part-time uh, medical billing and he plans to go to uh, Georgia State Law School. He's already admitted to John Marshall and Georgia State. Um, he studied and has a master's degree uh, for criminal justice at GSU. I think there is very big misunderstanding. The video, we have not had a chance to see the footage, but uh, security camera, I, we have to know they may look alike. There's no clear uh, ID, identification for this case. And he is here and he we would like to uh, request for signature on bond through pre-trial or so that way he can get out of the jail. Thank you. Oh, okay. And I know there's not directly a victim, but I still need the sound. Ms. Desiana, what is the alleged victim's name again? Um, yes, Judge, her name is Lin Hao Yang. All right, is Ms. Lin Hao Yang present on the Zoom conference and wants you to make a statement? All right, defendant's gonna receive a $500 surety bond. He is to um, have no contact with the alleged victim and have no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons. Was the state requesting a stay away? I yes, guess not. Judge. Okay. Yes. And uh, I'll stay away from that incident location. All right. Is there anything additional? Not from the state. Um, All right. Best of luck to you, sir. Next, we can go to position number 12. Mr. Spencer. This way. This way. Y'all come around. All right, Mrs. Spencer, your case is 24CR00-2040E. E. You're charged with battery family violence, simple battery family violence, simple battery and obstruction. Do you understand your rights? Sorry. All right, Mr. Howard. 16 total. Uh, on probation for ag stalking criminal damage to property. That should run until 2026. Okay. On Probation for a CWAC charge. I'll put it in the chat until 2028. 2023 probation, trespass. 2021, uh, I'll put that one in the chat. 2021 terrorist threats conviction. 2010 disorderly conduct, simple assault conviction. And Kim, that bond assessment is not accurate, so don't be hollering no level one. The bond assessment, the bond assessment says level one. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not accurate. They didn't even have the they didn't even do the history, so. All right, Ms. Desiano, please proceed. Thank you, Judge. This incident occurred April 17th, 2024 at the Georgia State University housing called the Mix Apartments at 120 Piedmont Avenue Northeast. Officers at the Georgia State University responded to a call at the student, how, how, I'm sorry, student housing complex, the Mix Apartments. The officers met with three victims, Jasmine Smith, Jennifer Van, and Mario Coleman, who all confirmed that the defendant has been living in the apartment with his girlfriend, Jasmine Smith, and her roommate, Jennifer Van. They advised that the defendant came home wanting to speak with his girlfriend, Jasmine Smith. There was some frustration. He pushed her. As he was leaving the apartment, he struck Miss Van across the face, leaving swelling and a red mark. As the defendant was leaving the student housing complex, he encountered Mario Coleman, and Mr. Coleman advised that he, that the defendant punched him twice. The victim described the defendant to the officers, a man matching his description, who was later identified as the defendant, was located one street over from the apartment complex. And uh, that was a different officer. And the defendant ran from that officer when asked to stop. We have spoken with all three victims, Judge. Um, the victim, this is the roommate, Jennifer Van. She stated that she confirmed everything in the warrant. She stated that 
Her and Jasmine Smith are roommates at the GSU student house. The victim stated the defendant is not a student. He's technically not supposed to be living there, but he has been for the past four months. She does not want contact and wants him to stay away from the residence. Uh, Mr. Coleman is a friend of Miss Van and was visiting the housing complex that day. He also confirmed the events in the warrant and states that he does not want any contact and would like the defendant to stay away. The um, girlfriend, Jasmine Smith, we've also spoke to her. She confirmed that she and the defendant are in a relationship, that he's been living at the housing for the last four months, um, but he's not a student there. He's not on the lease. Um, she says the defendant did not push her. He never struck her, stated that nothing like this has ever happened before, and she would like to have contact. Um, Your Honor, the I believe Miss Van is the person who who called the police. And initially, Miss Smith did tell the police that the defendant struck her or pushed her rather. Um, and given his extensive violent history, the state would recommend on count one a two thousand dollars surety, on count two a fifteen hundred dollars surety, on count three a fifteen hundred dollars surety, and on count four a five hundred dollars surety for a total of five thousand five hundred dollars. A no further contact with all victims, a stay away from the incident location, FVIP, and no weapons, drugs, or alcohol allowed on bond. And at this point, I believe um, some of the victims may be on the Zoom. If you could please sound for Jennifer Van, Mario Coleman, and Jasmine Smith. All right, we'll sound in turn. Um, Ms. Van, if you're present and wish to make a statement, please turn on your camera, raise your right hand. All right, hearing none. Mr. Coleman, if you are on the Zoom conference and wish to make a statement, please turn on your camera, raise your right hand. All right, hearing none. Ms. Smith, please raise your right hand. Do you swear and affirm the testimony you give today will be the truth to the best of your knowledge and under the penalty of perjury? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can put your hand down. What would you like to tell me today? Um, nothing regarding the incident. I just wanted to let you all know that any charges pressed on my behalf, I would like drop because I didn't press any charges as well as I was never in contact with any officer. I spoke to a con an officer briefly and he only asked me, um, how long we've been staying together, how long we've been in a relationship for, if I want to press charges and if his name was on a lease. We never had conversation about the incident and what happened. So I would just like all charges pressed on my behalf dropped. All right. Ms. Kim, please proceed. Thank you for coming to court and making that statement, Ms. Kim. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Spencer is 31 years old and he is working as a mechanic part time. However, his income is not high enough. So he's qualified for public defender services. Your Honor, we have no objection to no further contact and stay away from Jennifer Van and uh, Mr. Maria Coleman. However, um, he's okay with the to stay away from that um, place, but he wants to have a contact with his girlfriend, uh, Miss Jasmine Smith. So we would like to request for no for the violent contact with Jasmine Smith as she also wishes to have a contact with him. Um, he recently lost his father on January 2024 and that has um, become really serious issues for him, we would like to request for a signature on bond through pretrial, uh, whichever level. If not level one, definitely maybe level two, we would like to request for a signature on bond. Okay. Defendant is gonna receive a $3,000 surety bond, a thousand count one, a thousand count two, 500 count three, 500 count four, He's had no contact whatsoever with any of the alleged victims in this case. Stay away from that incident location and have no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons as a condition. His case will be reset to May 2nd, whereby aspects of the case can be revisited. Is there yeah. anything additional? Your Honor, he has two other counts on his book and sheet. The I'll assault go. charges are NOD, Judge. The assault okay. and the other... Battery family violence. Um, the battery family violence was downgraded to a simple battery based on the warrant. 
Does that help? Or there's still other charges showing? There's two battery family violence. One simple assault. Two simple assault, but one of them is family violence and then one simple battery. So judge, okay. what I did was I downgraded the, there were two, originally two battery family violence, and then there were the lesser included charges of assault and then um, simple assault. I NOD the two assault. I lowered one of the battery family violence to a simple battery family violence because there was no injuries in the warrant. So okay. he should just have four counts at this point. He's what I accused was a battery family violence, a simple battery family violence, a simple battery and obstruction. Okay. Um, so we're not seeing that. Mr. Walker, you want to shed some light? No, Ms. Desiano has it. Okay. I just saw you turn on your mic. I figured you were coming to oh, say no. something. Okay. I emailed I emailed the jail uh the paperwork uh so let's see, 1022 yeah, this morning. Yeah, okay. they can just check with records. They have all the information. Okay, I was just going off what was in the well, worksheet, sheet, but okay. okay. Hopefully he'll be able to um Still get out. Hopefully, it should be updated as the state has indicated. All right, Mrs. Spencer, best of luck to you. That concludes your case. All right, who do we have next? Next, we have position number five, Chad Jones. All right, Mrs. Jones, your case is 24CR002034. Why you're charged with criminal trespass? Do you understand your rights this afternoon? Yeah, all right, Mr. Howard. This one. It's tenth arrest. Twenty seventeen trespass conviction. Twenty seventeen shoplifting no low. Twenty fourteen probation, and twenty thirteen and twelve trespass convictions. Okay, Mr. Graham, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this incident took place April eighteenth, two thousand twenty-four. Law enforcement responded to a trespass call at the Sitco gas station it's located 2320 Cheshire Bridge Road in Atlanta. Upon arrival, um, one of the employees showed a video to the officer of Chad Jones walking around the location asking for money. Um, the officer came to the area. Uh, he was flagged down by an employee of another gas station where Mr. Jones had been criminally trespassed previously. He made contact with Mr. Jones there. Um, another business in the area told the officer that they've had issues with Mr. Jones as well. Uh, Mr. Jones was issued a trespass from the Sitco gas station. The state is requesting a signature bond through pretrial services. Stay away from Sitco gas station at 2230 Cheshire Bridge Road and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. All right, Mr. Ty, I'm inclined to give your client a signature bond to the jail if he understands he cannot go back to that Sitco gas station. Do you have any objections? And does your client understand that? Yes, Ms. Hodan. Ms. Hoda and Ms. Melanie Gay. Yeah, understand, oh. Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Defendant is going to receive a $5,000 signature bond through the jail. He is absolutely to not to return to that location on Cheshire Bridge Road. He is to have no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons as a condition. Best of luck to you, sir. Don't go back there. Thank you. They don't want you there. All right. Who do we have next? Position number eight, Joseph Peterson. All right, Mr. Peterson, you're charged in case 24 cr 0 2038C with theft by shoplifting, giving false information, and possession. Do you understand your rights? Yes, possession of drug related objects. Let me be clear. Yes, um, you understand your rights? All right, Mr. Howard. Second arrest, a resident of Alabama. He got a shoplifting arrest from this year out of Clayton County. That's open. Okay. Yes, yes Your Honor. This incident occurs. On April 18th, 2024, law enforcement were dispatched to the Home Depot at 3885 Jonesboro Road in Atlanta. Upon arrival, the officer made contact with Home Depot's asset protection, who had who we thought was Mr. Douglas Hooks detained in his office. The officer was shown surveillance footage of the defendant passing all points of sale with items stuffed into his jacket, several packs of batteries, a set of padlocks, and a flashlight with a total worth of $124.96. 
While speaking with the suspect in the room, the officer asked him for his name, to which he responded, Douglas Hooks. It wasn't until the defendant was taken into custody that the officer discovered that the name and date of birth the defendant provided were false and that his real name was Joseph Peterson. Upon proper search incident to arrest, officer found a pipe in the defendant's person with residue on it. The defendant stated earlier that the reason he was trying to steal items was so that he could buy food and crack cocaine. Uh, He does have an open shoplifting from last month in Clayton Judge. The state would recommend a $1,000 surety on count one, a $500 surety on count two, and a $500 surety on count three, a stay away from the Home Depot, and no drugs, weapons, or alcohol while out of bond. Okay, Smith, it's high. Yes, Your Honor. My client is 60 years old. Um, He is struggling with homelessness right now. Um, He, um, I think that somehow on his own, because this is only his second arrest, Your Honor, he he has taken advantage of the services that Pad has to offer. And he lives in a tent nearby where Pat offers services. Um, He he states that he's at least able to eat every morning at 10 a.m. Your Honor, I would deny the allegations in the warrant, but what's it looks like it's camping equipment. He's living in a tent. Um, he he does um, he, he cannot afford a bond, Your Honor. He's he's uh-huh. homeless. I would uh, ask for a signature bond, um, and I would ask for the signature bond through the jail, um, Your Honor. He, he he's not a flight risk. He. Uh, has shown me uh, his papers from Clayton County. So he keeps up with his court dates. He he um, will reappear before um, the court when summoned. Um, I, I think they'll give him a date when he's signing out here. So. All right. Defendant is going to receive um, a $2,000 SOB through the jail, 1000 on count one, 500 on each remaining count. He's absolutely stay away from that Home Depot location on Jonesboro Road and have no alcohol, no drugs, and no weapons. Do not go back to that Home Depot, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Have a good day. All right. Who do we have next? Position number six, Martin Lang- Langston. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Langston. Your case is 24CR002035E. E. You're charged with simple assault, family violence. Do you understand your rights today? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Mr. Howard? Second. Uh, 2016, simple battery, DB, NOD. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Graham, please proceed. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This incident took place April 18, 2024. Law enforcement responded to a domestic dispute at 150 Parkside Close in Alpharetta. Um, upon arrival, they met with Stacy Smith. She explained that her husband, Martin Langston, had gotten into her face and yelled at her during an argument, uh, stemming from some comments she had made. Uh, she stated he was less than three inches from her face. Um, she was afraid that he was going to hurt her, and she hesitated when answering the questions. Um, she stated that uh, Mr. Langston has temper and anger issues. The son, their son was present, told the police that he did see his father towering over his mother, and he was afraid also that his dad would hurt his mom. Um, uh, our office has spoken with Miss Smith, uh, she does confirm that they're married, they do live together, and they share the one child. Um, she confirmed the events in the warrant. She stated that she did not want uh, Mr. Langston to be arrested. She only called the police to de-escalate the situation. She does say that this is not the first time he's been violent towards her. They have a previous case from 2016. Um, the victim stated she's not in fear of Mr. Langston, and she wants to continue contact and form the return back to the residence and that she may be on Zoom. Your Honor, the state is requesting uh, a $1,500 surety bond. We are concerned for Ms. Smith's safety based on the uh, the facts in the warrant. We're, we're requesting a no for the contact with Stacy Smith, a stay away from 150 Parkside Close in Alpharetta, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons, and we would like to sound for Ms. Smith at this time. All right, Ms. Smith, are you present? I wish to make a statement. All 
All right, I don't see anyone with that name, so Ms. Kim, please yes, proceed. Your Honor. My client, Mr. Langston, is 53 years old. He has been here in Georgia ever since 1999. Um, he has a bachelor's degree from North Carolina. Um, he works at IT industry. He has is gainfully employed with a very professional job. Um, his wife is housewife. He, she does not work. And he is a sole breadwinner for his wife and uh, their son. Your Honor, we would like to request for a signature on bond through jail. Uh, there was nobody who got hurt or injured. I mean, three inches, husband and wife, they three inches is not that far. I mean, not that uh, close. I mean, it can be even more um, intimate and closer. I just think this is kind of too much for... Um, all right, I understand, but I have not heard from Miss Smith. And has have either party made contact with her? I tried, oh, but I couldn't reach her. Oh, the state did. Okay. Yeah. I don't no, for the violent contact is what she wants as well. So we asked for a signature on bond through jail and no for the violent contact. All right. Mm -hmm. I I don't go ahead, Mr. Graham. What were you gonna say? Just the reason for uh the recommendation is that we did make contact and she did say this was not the first time that they that they that she has experienced violence uh, from her husband and that there's an additional case even I mean from 2016, but uh it's a, the state's concern is just for her safety. It's very remote and it was NOD. There was no conviction, Your Honor, and he's presumed to be innocent, and I don't think he is dangerous. All right. Defendant is going to receive a $2,000 signature bond through the jail. He is to have no contact with Ms. Smith at this time and stay away from that location. He can return one time with a member of law enforcement to get any items. Additionally, he's to have no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. And of course, contact can be revisited at a later date. All right. Is there anything additional? Um, third party transfer for his child. Yes, he so, can coordinate transfer of the children through a third party. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, best of luck to you, sir. Does that conclude the entire FDA calendar? I believe so, Your Honor. Yes. We have an add on. Have add -on. Yeah, I'm about to say. But it's I think that's next. Uh, so we have to finish up this, and then there will be another add on uh, public defender who will be working on that. I'm sorry, what, Miss Kim? I got lost. She's oh. ready to go, but we have an ad. Oh, Miss Kim is leaving <laughs> us. Okay. Just say that again. PD I know, right? Yeah. It's Friday afternoon. I'm leaving, but you all are staying. That's what I needed you to say. Yes. Bye-bye, yes. Miss Kim. Take care. <laughs> All right, so we, do we have an extensive add-on calendar? Just one position. The state is ready. I'm not sure who's representing her, but just okay. one position. Did What's I, the name? Did I see an add-on? Okay. Position number three on the add-on. Position three. So what about one and two, Ian? I was told that they were resolved. I'm assuming that they're okay. signature bonds. Those were okay. signature bonds. Yes, I I have the signature bonds ready for the judge to sign. All right, thank you, Miss Champion. Okay, so we're I, my add-on calendar only has two positions. Who is this? Andre Yates. That is not on the add-on that I have. Well, He's that page maybe. two of two. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Howard. I appreciate that. Give me a moment. Okay. All right, Mr. Yates, your case is 24CR002067E. You're charged with battery family violence and simple battery family violence. You understand your rights? That's amazing. All right, Mr. Howard. So if he has out of state, GCIC changed the way they do stuff the other day. So I got the Georgia history. I'm not sure if he has out of state. I got okay. four. This would be the fifth Georgia cycle. Last was back in March out of Douglas County, FTA. Um, before that was 2021, possession of marijuana, misdemeanor. Another 2021 marijuana possession. 2020, battery of a sexual nature. That's it. Your Honor, if we could avoid from mentioning that. In, in okay. Time. Well, okay. we're nobody in the courtroom. That's why I did it. But we'll, we, we I can move we on. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I think we can move on. It's okay. 
Mr. I would love to move on. Mr. Yes, Walker, please so proceed. law enforcement was dispatched at 1319 Campbellton Road when they met with the victim, Alicia Jenkins. She advised that her living boyfriend uh, was outside smoking a black and mild with her. For whatever reason, he flicked his black and mild onto her. At that point, she flicked her black and mild back onto him. Um, I believe that he slapped her or grabbed her at some point. They went back to the house and get to argue over the situation. He then headbutted her. The officer observed a large knot on the victim's forehead. Um, the state is asking for a $3,000 surety bond. Uh, a no further violent contact with Ms. Jenkins. No alcohol, I'm sorry, no alcohol, drugs, or weapons while on bond. We have had contact with Ms. Jenkins, and uh, apparently she's requesting contact for whatever reason. Not sure if it's on the line, but we would sign for Alicia Jenkins at this time. I'm sorry, you said surety bond, Mr. Walker? Yes, Your Honor. And okay. That's because he has that open C rec charge and a 2024 FTA, and that 2024 FTA is in association with a felony case. All right. Is Miss Jenkins on the line? I don't see anyone with that name because I, every time I say that, though, they get ready to start talking. All right, counsel, how are you? I forget your name, sir. What is your name? Zachary Judd, Your Honor. That's right, Mr. Judd. How are you? Good afternoon. Please proceed. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, your Honor, Mr. Gates is 49 years old. He's lived in Georgia for the past five years. He's had a stable address here in Atlanta, 30336, for about eight and a half months. Your Honor, he does. Uh, I, I would also like to state for the record that if he still has his job upon release, he won't qualify for continued public defender representation. However, obviously, if his job situation has changed, then that would change the assessment. Um, Your Honor, he does have an 11-year-old son for whom he provides care. So uh, we, we are asking that he be allowed out so he can start working and providing for his son. Your Honor, he has had a stable job with waste management for about eight and a half months. He regularly volunteers in Atlanta, helping to feed the homeless with Westside Future Funding. Um, you know, the complaining witness is his soon-to-be wife. They still live together, uh, raising his child together. They've lived together for the past two years without incident, like it's a little over a year and a half. Because, Your Honor, this this case is from almost two years. 2022, I saw that, yes. And, and they've lived together without incident since. Uh, he is okay with a stay-away order from that location and a no further violent contact, but he does rely upon Ms. Jenkins both emotionally and financially. All right. Defendants have received a thousand dollars surety bond, five hundred on each count. He's to have no further violent contact with the alleged victim, have no alcohol, no drugs, no weapons as a condition. Is there anything additional? Oh, well, Your Honor. All right. Best of luck. Surety, not signature. It's surety. Surety. But five, it's a thousand. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Best of luck to you, Mr. Yates. And we've resolved the other two cases. So I believe that concludes state out. I'm sorry. State, where, where are we? What is today? This See. this SEA, SEA calendar. We are complete. Miss Champion, will you review the calendar for me? Position number one is a $1,500 good bond reset SAP 5-2. Position number two is a total of a $2,000 good bond reset SAP 5-2. Position number three is a total of a $3,000 sign on bond through the jail reset for the notice. Position number four is a $1,500 good bond reset SAP 5-2. Position number five is a $5,000 sign on bond through the jail reset for the notice. Position number six is a $2,000 sign on bond through the jail reset for the notice. Position number seven is a $2,000 pretrial bond level two reset for the notice. Position number eight is a total of a thousand dollars sign up on through the jail reset for the notice. Position number nine is a five thousand dollar pretrial bond level three reset for the notice. Position number ten is a five thousand dollar sign up on through the jail reset for the notice. Position number eleven is a twenty five hundred dollar pretrial bond level one reset for the notice. Position number twelve is a total of a three thousand dollar good bond reset SAP five two. Position number 13 is a $500 good bond reset SAP 5-2. Position number 14 is the $4,000 sign on bond through the jail reset for the notice. Position number one on the add-on is a $3,000 pre-trial bond level one reset for the notice. 
position number two is a $1,000 sign up bond through the jail reset for the notice. And position number three will be a total of a thousand dollar good bond reset SAP five two. Any questions? You got a uh, per judge for seven nine and eleven. Yes, I do. All right. All right. Hearing no further questions, take care, everyone, and have a great afternoon. That concludes.